Hi everyone, it's me Darlene. I just laid out one of the scrap packs that I made so I could take some pictures and I thought I'm going to use this scrap pack right there that you are looking at to make a video to show you how you can make, I'm assuming, an entire quilt top with uh, my scrap packs. These are pieces that are all different sizes and uh, there should be all different prints. This particular one has 68 pieces. I sell these by weight since the sizes vary. And uh, I'm going to, I don't know if I will complete an entire quilt top because I am super busy, but I will show you the idea that I have for how to put these together. First, I just want to show you what my scrap packs look like. Actually, I sell two different kinds of scrap packs. One is like this, and I'll explain that in a minute. The other is pieces that are mostly the same size because I'm not actually using scraps to cut them. <laughs> I cut them from fat quarters. And those all come out to be like about five inches, give or take, by eight inches, give or take. These started out being just remnants that I was cutting, but I've gone through so many remnants now because these are quite a popular thing that I've got going here. So I do use, um, you know, different prints that I might have a lot of, or fat quarters that don't ever make it into a set. So all kinds of odds and ends end up getting into the scrap packs and this particular scrap pack is one where the sizes vary. So always look in the description so you'll know what kind of scrap pack you're getting if you ever decide to try to buy one from me. I would say that these scrap packs with various sizes run anywhere from like no smaller than like four by four and they go up to maybe five by six, seven, maybe eight. And I think some people are like, what do I do with that? They're not the same size. I don't know how to put these together. So I just wanted to show you an idea that I came up with to uh, help those of you who uh, need a little encouragement to just do your own thing and always try different things, you'll find a way. So I'm going to start by sorting my pieces into kind of similar sizes, like, you know, all things this size, and then maybe, um, you know, a pile for the things that are longer. So let me do that. I ended up with two piles like this, and even in these piles, the sizes vary greatly. And uh, you don't have to ever get a scrap pack from me to do this. When you have leftover fabric, you can just put it aside and know that you can, uh, you know, mix different sizes. You don't have to, you know, cut everything. And these are scrappy cuts also. I'm usually just cutting on the fold. I'll fold over, cut. I do do some rotary cutting. When Skylar makes these packs, she does all rotary cutting. And, uh, but I, I like to fold over and just stick my scissors in there and slice across. But there's certainly enough fabric there to trim them down or do whatever you want with them. You don't even have to use them for a scrap quilt. You can use them for just various things. It's just a way to get a variety. And I want you to not be afraid to mix all kinds of prints. And you can also use them in crumb quilts. They're big. They're too big to be crumbs at this point. But if you watch my series, you know there's ways to sew things and to make the pieces end up looking small. So here's my idea. I cut a piece of cardboard, eight inches square. You can use paper if you want. You can even use your mat, but I think that's confusing. So I like this. And you're going to take some scraps and you're just going to see if they fit. If they are too big, they can be trimmed. If they're not big enough, you can like trim a different piece and add it. So maybe they'd be like three pieces across. So you're just kind of going to like make a puzzle and see what you come up with. So I would not need a very, you know, wide piece this way. I like that. Let me go sew those two things together. When you lay them down, lay them overlapped a little bit. You want to make sure you have enough uh, fabric for your seam allowance and then also make sure they're hanging over your square. And I can shift it. 
if there was a piece that had a lot of extra fabric, I would try to, you know, save as much fabric as I could because that fabric can go in your crumb box. And I like this. Now, I don't necessarily need intersections matching. I would actually prefer that they don't. And I want to throw in weird prints together. That's what I like to do. How about something like this? I'm going to make it like here. Now I'm going to get some some scraps left over. I like that. And how about, oh, let's just be crazy, wild and crazy. Oh my God, this is kind of hard to decide on. Let's put a piece like this, but then I'm going to trim this and make it skinny. I'm gonna go sew those two together. So now I can kind of decide. I don't want my intersections together. So I'm going to move this one like all the way over here. Let's put this guy here. And I see that it's hanging over this edge. So I'm going to like want the seam to be here. So I'm just going to push this back and I'm going to cut. Where's my scissors? Do I have any? So I'm just going to like cut this off right here. Crumb box. And now I'm going to sew this there. And if your seams come out wonky, that's fine. I almost was going to do it on purpose that way, but I decided to do this. I've decided now that I want this purple piece where the um, seam is there. So looky, looky this. I am going to put these two together, but before I do that, I am going to trim this nice piece off first. I'm going to do it without a ruler. I'm so brave! And this is the seam I'm sewing. And look, I pressed my seams open. I finger pressed open. I never do open. I felt like doing open. I already decided I'm not pressing seams open. <laughs> it's just more difficult when you get to the ironing part. So now I just want to make sure that it's covering my square. It is. And now I just need to decide how I want to trim it. You know, I can go like here and cut more of this off or here, cut more of this off. So let me decide. I decided that I'm going to cut in a way that gives me the most scraps. And I'm actually going to use this as a guide. I'm going to just put my ruler right up to the edge of the cardboard and trim. And I can put it up to the cardboard there, take the cardboard away and trim. Look at the lovely, lovely scraps I have for crumb quilting. Don't forget about those two. Now let's go here. And here. Right up to my cardboard. Take my cardboard away. And now, oh my gosh, I like it. Look. A nice little eight inch block. Look how pretty it is. <gasps> Let me make another one. This is only the second one. I am enjoying this so much that I absolutely have to use all the scraps. But I won't do it all in this video. I want to make a couple more with you because I want to show you now that these little scraps that I love so much they're not going in my crumb box unless they're left over. I'm going to actually use them and we will start to have some of these eight inch blocks. Um, some of them will have smaller pieces. And I want to remind you that, of course, this can be turned any way. I'm going to absolutely love this. Oh, I'm so happy I have something different to do. So I'm going to go ahead and sew these three things together. You see, that's the scrap that was left over from this one. Do love. And, uh, you know, I'm going to have some wonky seams, and that is fine. Because I'm sewing sideways and with my left foot, because my sewing machine is, like, over there. And uh, I'm, I'm not left-footed, I have discovered. <laughs> it makes a difference. But I... Um, I'm doing the best that I can. I'm having so much fun. All right, so now I can decide. Hmm, I think I want a lot of this going on. And I will trim this guy, and I'll trim it right now. 
and he can make another appearance later. And then uh, let's see what else I want to uh, do. How about him? Like that. And red polka dots. Sewing these two together. And this is going to go like this. You know, but I'm going to go ahead and straighten this edge that I will be sewing on. This edge is straight enough. So how did I want it? Like that. Just matching up these two edges. Look! Oh my god! I love this so much! Let me make one more with you and then I will send you on your merry way and I will come back and uh, show you you know what I do with the others. I'm assuming I'll make a quilt top. Maybe I'll have enough for a couple more things. So look, there's um, 68 pieces in this pack. Now if I have a scrap pack with less pieces, that just means that the pieces were generally a little bit bigger or they were more bigger because it goes by weight. But look at how cool this is. Oh my god, this is like the best way to make a scrap a scrap quilt ever. I am just loving it. Now see, I, I don't want those two guys, but that's okay, we can turn. Let's turn, make them far away. Oh, I hope you like this process. Let me make one more. I have this and I decided to move it over and I'm going to add this gold piece. Now it's crooked on this side, that's okay. It'll get trimmed. Now I have this and I will trim this. How about we do a strip across? <gasps> yeah, let's try that. I'm going to sew these two like skinny pieces together to make a strip long enough to go across. Oh, all right, I'm just going to make a straight edge there and there, and then I will join those. So I have this. Make sure I'm over my cardboard. I can feel that I'm over. And I'm not going to be too fussy. Let's put a piece like this, overlapped, and something here. So first I'm joining these two. And now I'm joining here, and I'm making sure that my intersections are not matching up. See, I love my seams all pressed to the side. I like that better. Look at how amazing this is. And I love the narrow strip. Where is it? I love the narrow strip in there. And you can turn these any way you want. Oh my goodness. So I am going to complete this whole pack because I want very much to put them all together. I will show you. I will show you how many blocks I make. I have this exact set of scraps, exactly like you're seeing on eBay at the time that I upload this video. I have only seven. I can cut either eight or 16 at a time, or in multiples of eight. And uh, I used one, so there's seven left. And I think I have a different scrap pack left for, uh, from a previous sale. And I might have a batik one also, but the batik ones, they're almost all the same size, but you could cut them. So anyway, go look at my eBay. Link is in the description box. And also on my blog, my eBay name is Darlene Michaud, and I will have those available for you. I hope you like this method. I'm absolutely in love with it. I just think this is so incredibly helpful, and um, I'm a happy camper. Thank you so much for watching. I'll be back with more soon. Bye.